this is going to be kind of a crazy concept, but I want to throw it out there. Um, and maybe the, I've, I've had like five beers, so maybe this is uh, coming from that. But I think in comics, we have a tendency to overthink things and maybe in a, a pretty major way. So let me try and stumble my way through this, see if it resonates. And maybe this helps us be a little bit more happier about the comics we're getting and, uh, and where we're going. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, I've been thinking about, you know, the, the, the amount of energy that we spend on what feels like pretty meaningless things in comics, like worrying about things that haven't happened yet, or making an assessment about something that we don't really have all the data on. It, it feels like that happens a lot in comics. And maybe it's, it's, a, it's a fact that fans in comics are really, really invested in, in the industry. You know, and I think this is one thing that I wish the publishers and the creators would digest more is that the people who love comics, the fans of comics, they're all in. They're in maybe to an unhealthy degree. They, they love comics. They pay attention. They listen to videos. We're listening to videos. We know what we love. We love comics. We love the, the environment. We love the atmosphere. We love what it does for us. We love comics. And I think a lot of people who work in comics and maybe on the business side, the publishers, they kind of, they, 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 they don't understand what it means to be a fan because to be a fan of comics means you're willing to shell out money to live this experience. And I, I, I mean, man, I wish that the publishers got this more that, you know, the person who's going to shell out, I, I don't know, what, what was it? Six, 12 plus four, uh, roughly 20, no, no more than that. Um, 20, uh, roughly $36, $40 for the core series of empire. I mean, these were people who love comics so much. They were, they were willing to basically take a sizable amount of money. I mean, that's not nothing. Um, and, and sink it into this event. I, I, I often suspect that a lot of creators of comics have disconnected the fact that people are reaching into their wallets and they're taking out money they can't really afford to buy these comics. That's how much people love them. So when people get really attached to comics, really invested in what's going on and kind of the, the things around it, it's a sign of faith. It's a sign of Fans who are, are really wanting to be part of the success or the story that's being told. And, and I, by the way, I mean, if you're a creator listening to this, please consider for a moment. You can think everything else I'm saying is absolute bullshit. It's fine. But consider this. You have a bunch of people who are willing to give you their money and, and invest their time and their energy. It's not just their dollars for buying the comics. It's their time in reading the comics, commenting on the comics, pulling panels out, listening to YouTube videos and everything else. If you, if you subscribe to the idea that time is money, and by the way, every successful person does, because time is money. You have a finite amount of time in this world. Um, that's a lot of investment into comics. And so when the fans get upset with this or that or whatever else, instead of blowing it off, instead of going to that default, you know, the fans are Nazis or bad or socialists or whatever else was going on, pause for a moment to think that you have got an emotional connection that many companies, many brands, many industries would kill for. You know the reason why Disney and AT&T and, and those big entities are not just killing off their comic division because somewhere in that business, they recognize the fact that, that this emotional investment, this time investment, this financial investment of the fans they do have is gold. And, and don't let anybody convince you otherwise. If you're Disney and I, I know, I know for a fact at Disney, I, I, I assume at AT&T, but I know for an absolute fact at Disney that the emotional investment into these properties 
is considered extremely valuable. The challenge is that the business model within the publishers and the comic industry means that the people often working comics are not connected to that, that value that's been created. But at the same time, uh, I, I just, I'm struck by, and I, I hope I'm communicating, I'm not communicating this well, but I hope that people understand that the amount of investment that fans, creators, people who work in comics put into this industry, put into comics, it's so huge. And we trivialize it. We take it for granted a lot of the time. And it's, it's, it's so significant. I think everyone down the chain, from the distributor to the local comic shop to the creator to the fan, at times we dismiss the amount of connection we have into this industry. And at times we worry about, you know, I don't want to say the wrong things, but we're putting energy into worrying about, you know, what this inker is doing here or, you know, if, if some random executive within Marvel is doing this or some fan is saying that. It just, the amount of energy that goes in to kind of analyzing and assessing this business. I want to speak now to, you know, people who identify themselves as anti-comics gate or comics gate or any one of these groups that's really de- that really kind of keyed up into making this industry something else, better, worse, whatever your point of view is. Um, consider for a moment that the real strength in comics is the amount of energy, effort, and investment that all of us are putting into it, whether you're positive or negative. That's powerful. Do you think that in the, like, uh, we'll put it this way, the, the cola wars, the, the, there are executives right now at Coke and Pepsi who have seven-figure salaries who are managing those brands, and they are wishing that the amount of, that the people who drink their soda are invested in whether Coke is superior to Pepsi, they wish that they even had one-tenth of the amount of investment and energy and thought and, and care that comics has. Even though their business is a multi-billion dollar business, far more than comics, everyone at that brand level is just begging for fans, for anyone to be as emotionally invested in their product as comic fans are invested day to day. It, it's, it's weird to think about. And I think I've had experience doing consulting work and working in other industries. And what always strikes me, I keep it to myself because it doesn't make any sense in the context of that meeting. What always strikes me is that you have these people um, who are spending in some cases, millions of dollars on focus groups and consultants and other people trying to figure out how to get the same level of brand attachment that comics has daily. I know it's annoying if you're a creator to go onto Twitter and see people, you know, bitching about your story or complaining about, you know, Captain Marvel's boobs or whatever, whatever, whatever random thing people are complaining about. But consider for a moment as a creator. You are working in an industry where the fans are so connected to your product, they're willing to spend months out of their lives, years out of their lives, connected to your product. And to the people above the creators, because too often, I think as fans, we mix up the management and the creators. If you're a Mag Visagio, you're way different from a... Tom Brevoort or a Joe Casada. Those are those are two different layers. And in many cases, it'd be great if the creators understood that this attachment to the fans is not something to fear or be angry about or fight against. But in fairness, a lot of those creators are freelancers. They do not have a financial commitment into this bigger ecosystem. The management, however, does. These are people with staff jobs that are collecting anywhere from 140 to, you know, I, I know there's a couple of executives at Marvel clearing, you know, 850,000 a year. And, you know, for those people, 
you have a bigger responsibility to understand. You have creators who are working for you, who want to make money, want to provide, you know, quality product, whatever, or not quality, whatever. They're willing to provide something. And you have fans that are invested into your product. It's your responsibility to get the creators to a point where they can create this product, generate this IP, uh, put material out for the fans to who, who are just begging to consume it. I, I want to speak, you know, specifically, if you're a creator who has complained, and, and maybe rightfully so, whatever else, if you're a person at Marvel and you had to endure a year or more of uh, uh, Richard Meyer of a diversity of comics complaining that like some of the editors were basically hired as assistant editors. So the primary editors could have sex with you. I, I that was not exa- his exact point, but you know, he made this comment that these were purse puppies and so on. Um, yeah, that, that, that sucks as a way to describe a person and a job particularly if, if that's not you, if you've got a job at Marvel and you're really happy, you're, you've got that job and you've got that paycheck and you're really thrilled to be there and everything else. And you got some random guy on YouTube saying you're, you're just hired for sex. That sucks. I, I mean, I, there's no mistake about it. I'm not excusing it. I'm not anything, but it, it sucks. And I think he's, a, he's since apologized. I, I maybe he's sincere, maybe he's not who gives a shit really in the end of in the, at the end of the world. But, um, it, it, you still got a guy who's coming on to YouTube. He's recording videos. Granted, he's profiting off of it. No mistake about it. You know, he's, he's profiting off of it. But good Lord, he's making you know videos every day talking about this industry. I mean, imagine if you're like Procter & Gamble or uh, Johnson & Johnson and you're producing products. I mean, you wish that there was some guy on YouTube talking about toothpaste every day and what it meant. I mean, I, I, try and look at this a different way. I'm not saying that that stuff is not annoying or insensitive or bad or any of that. I mean, if you're Mags Visaggio and you had to hear that shit for like a year, I'm sure that sucks. I mean, it, it's not fun to wake every morning and have like 10,000 tweets uh, aimed and notifications aimed at you, you know, calling you names. I, that sucks. But there is something worse. The worse is nothing. The worse is nobody cares enough about your product to say anything. And I am not saying this is an excuse to being an asshole. Please don't be an asshole about comics. This is supposed to be something that we love. Let's not be be assholes about it. But. Uh, yeah, we uh, so many people lose their minds over negative comments, failing to recognize that worse than negative comments is no comments. Like I, I mean, I, I wonder, like a lot of people working in this industry as fans, as reviewers, as employees, as freelancers, or anything else, have you ever worked for a job where you just had silence? Have you ever worked for a startup where you had no attention? That's that's a lot of people in the world, and it it I, I'm not saying again. I'm, I, there's going to be uh, somebody who will send me a mail to saying you know this doesn't excuse for you know Richard Meyer making fun of me for being gay or whatever else. I, I agreed, you know that he shouldn't do that. This asshole behavior. No, no, sure, but you could have nothing. And, 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 and please don't mistake what I'm saying here as, uh, you know, be grateful for what you have. That's not my message. My message is you have a bunch of people, bands, creators. I mean, more than almost any other industry on the planet, comics is based off of passion. And if you as a manager or as an employee or as somebody working in this industry cannot understand that passion can be harnessed Passion can be profited off of. Passion can be generated. Passion is is a, a key stepping stone to being successful. If you can't put those two things together, then maybe you belong as some kind of office drone outside of comics where you get a tiny paycheck and you go home and watch Netflix and go to bed. Maybe that's where you belong. Um, comics is amazing, and too often... As fans, as 
employees, as freelancers, as, as uh, anything that we are, too often we blow off the passion as creepy or wrong, and we miss the value that is there. And I think once you recognize the value, you can make something out of it. That's, that's what I think. Anyway, this is a crazy little rant. Chances are I'll delete this without posting it, or I'll forget that I what I said here, and I'll post it anyway and then regret it. One of those things. I, I think that my message here is, please, comics is an amazing thing. There's a lot of power in it. We can't, as fans, as creators, as freelancers, as managers, whatever we are, we can't give away our power so easily. If we do, we're leaving value on the table. And that's that's a shame. That's not what we should be doing. I don't know what to say. Is comment, like, hate, downvote a million times. Do what you got to do. Thanks for listening.